Hi, my name's Lindsay Pomeroy, owner of Wine Smarties and a master of wine. I am here tasting Ridge Linton Springs in the deductive tasting approach with added commentary, obviously mine. So follow along, hopefully you'll enjoy how I approach wine. First things first, appearance. So red wine appearance can not tell you quite a bit of information. How deep is the wine? Is it more ruby? Is it more purple? Is it more garnet starting to sh shift and change color, which would suggest age? This wine's fairly youthful, which makes sense. It's a 2018, so it shouldn't show any w real definitive color changes yet. And I would call this a pretty deep ruby, which is typical of many young red wines. Um, and deep makes sense, it's mainly Zinfandel. Zinfandel, Cabernet Merlot, Syrah generally throw deeper color, especially in their youth. There's other grapes like Pinot, Nebbiolo, Sangiovese, where you can get Garnet um, or a lighter ruby color in the case of Pinot. Okay, so that being said, the color looks bright, doesn't look like anything's wrong with it, honestly is the point of this step. Um, and smelling it, to check, is there any fault? I don't smell any, it smells fresh and clean and vibrant and aromatically quite intense, which supports the fact it's a Zinfandel. Zinfandel's an expressive grape. You should find a lot of flavors coming out of the glass. Um, my markers for Zinfandel is strawberry jam, or like if people remember fruit roll-ups from the 80s, or I think they call it fruit bark now, um, but that like dried, almost jammy, raspberry, red fruit characteristics for me is a marker for Zinfandel. The other marker I get is tea, like steeped tea. Um, so it has this fun information uh, combination of ripe red fruits and tea, which is kind of a fun combination. Can also have boysenberry, black fruits as well. It's one of those grapes that unevenly ripens, so you get a variety of different cat categories, which is kind of cool. So super fruit driven, typical of a California red. Um, jammy, bright, also smelling a lot of oak, which is not uncommon with Zinfandel of this quality tier. So. That vanilla, uh, vanillin notes, uh, coconut dill makes me think there's definitely some American oak in here because coconut and dill are kind of your classic American markers. Um, vanilla could go either way. It could be American or French, but I'm, I'm getting it possibly could be a mixed oak regime, which is not uncommon nowadays. Um, and you can always check the tech notes. And I tell all my wine students, read the tech notes. Tech notes help you connect the why to the what. How do I understand this wine? Well, to understand the wine, you need to know how it's made. And by Googling tech notes for every wine that you possibly can and start making that link, it speeds up your ability to assess and make conclusions. All right, let's taste it. Super ripe fruit characteristics, supportive of a warm climate. I'm getting some grip on the tannins. I'd call the medium tannins medium plus, which supports this wine, has some structure, has some backbone, and I definitely know the producer's known for aging their wines, and this one definitely could. Um, it has nice acidity, I wouldn't call it high, I'd call it a medium acidity, nice balance, it's got a nice mouthfeel, again, connecting to the ripeness of the fruit, the alcohol, the alcohol on this wine is 14.5, and that does contribute to the body and the mouthfeel. So all together, it's a nicely balanced wine with a strong, firm uh, palate, structure in the palate, supporting age potential, high quality. There's oak, but the oak is nicely integrated. And um, anyway, overall solid wine, great example of Zinfandel. If you'd like to learn how to taste like me, visit winesmarties.com. I am very happy and honored to be a part of your wine evolution journey. Cheers.